Blue Log just concluded with its first season and with the announcement of its second season and its movie, Episode Nagi, I thought I would make a video talking about why you should watch Blue Lock and how it could possibly be the best sports anime manga. While I know that this opinion may come off as a little bit of recency bias and I may get some hate comments saying how Kuroko's Basket or Haikyuu is better, but this is just my opinion. You may not share my opinion and it doesn't make either of us wrong because preference is just that, it's a preference. You may not share the same preference as me, but you're entitled to your own opinion. The video isn't supposed to be me saying that Blue Lock is the best, but rather it's just me stating my opinion where you may end up agreeing with me and changing your stance. Before we get into the video, spoiler warning for Blue Lock, both the anime and the manga, so if you're not caught up on either, please keep scrolling. Now the foundation of any story is just that, the story, the plot. No matter how good a show looks or how good the characters are, if the story is total dog shit, then people aren't gonna like it. What separates Blue Lock from other sports anime manga is that it branches off of the sports standard. You know, the all for one and one for all type aspect that you see in any kind of sports show. Legit any sports related stuff follows this content. Hell, even fucking Airbud follows this format. But Blue Lock doesn't. The whole series about Blue Lock is stepping over others in order to become the best. May seem harsh, but that's the whole first and second selection of the series. What's great about this interpretation of the genre is that there's a huge risk involved with the series. In most sports shows, there isn't a huge risk. In Haikyuu or Kuroko's Basket, if they lose, that's it, they just lose the tournament. They don't sacrifice anything and always try again next year. The most they lose are the people that they played with who can come watch them and they get a whole new group of people whose skill set could help them win the tournament next year. But in Blue Lock, if they lose, that's it, they're done. Their careers are over. The twist on sacrificing is such a good aspect of the show, because despite the punishment in Blue Lock not meaning anything physically taxing like you could see in most shonen manga, the punishment here is more of a mental risk. Because you gotta realize, there are 300 skilled players in Blue Lock, hand selected by Ego and Honori, meaning each of them loves soccer and dreams of going pro. And losing Blue Lock is almost the same thing as death to them, giving up on their dreams forever with no possible chance of redemption. Like look at Baro in the 3v3 after Isagi made him pass. Baro saw his entire future in a sad little apartment as an alcoholic watching Isagi on the U20 World Cup team on TV. Giving the show an actual relatable danger makes the matches way more intense than the ones in Haikyuu or Kuroko's Basket. Another thing that I like about Blue Lock is that they essentially lie dead center in terms of the quote unquote power system of their show. I know saying a sports show has a power system may not make sense, but let me explain. Think of the topic of sports anime as a spectrum. On one side you have the all skill no powers, and on that line you have Haikyuu. Stuff like Asahi's powerful spiking, Hinata's jumping and minus tempo fast attack, and Nishinori's receiving. All of these can be learned through consistent practice. And on the other side you have superpowers and sports that are masked as skill, and on that point you have Kuroko's basket. Things like Kisei's perfect copy, which allows him to create an exact copy of someone's skills without the same kind of physique, or Kuroko's invisibility in incredibly quick and accurate phantom passes. Things like these are nearly impossible, as without the exact same physique or muscle power, you most likely can't overpower someone stronger than you just by copying the exact same motions that they do. The only reason that Reo's perfect copy is much easier and more logically sound than Kisei's is because when you see who he's copying, they have relatively similar body types. But when you look at Kisei copying Amine or Kagami's super jump or strength, it's not really close to realistic as the only reason that they can do those things is because of conditioning and training. Not to mention that Ryo, in many cases of his perfect copy, he's trained to recreate their abilities. Take Rin and Sai's skills. Rin's backspin shot and Sai's beautiful dribbling are most likely results of his training with Manchine City, who specialize in speed and an explosive rush. And it's even more unlikely that you're like Kuroko and you can't be detected on the court and you can send pinpoint passes to your teammate without anyone being aware of you or that you maintain the ball possession. That and because when you look at the people in the stands, you can see that they identify each certain skill with a name as if they can visually see some kind of special power from it. Like when Akashi uses his split personality in Emperor's Eye. Now where Blue Lock rests is right dead center of either on the dot that I call superhuman skills and techniques. Now what separates these two is that the characters do have what appear to be superhuman abilities. Take Nagi's Black Hole Trap or Isagi's Metavision for instance. Both are masked with these kinds of names that make them seem like superpowers when they're just really finely tuned skills. Now what sets these apart from Haikyuu is that these skills are enhanced by their natural born talent. Nagi's black hole trapping is almost impossible in real life. Only a few people are actually able to recreate it to any kind of extent. And Isagi's metavision is just quick thinking and responding while using his peripheral vision to see the field around him. It's not a superpower, it's just a trained technique. Blue Lock slightly exaggerates this talent to make it appear like a superpower when it's just a blended mix of talent and skill. Blue Lock's story just keeps getting better and better. 
from the selection arcs to the U20 match to the Neo Egoist League, the series just keeps getting better and better as the players slowly advance towards their dreams. So you have a good story with a good kind of power system, but what about the characters? Well that's what's good about Blue Lux cast is that they have such a wide and diverse cast of characters. Every character is so vastly different in design, skills, and personality that there's at least one for every different type of viewer. Whether you like the super psychos who are ultra competitive, or the laid back losers who are super talented, or the ultra hot speed demons, or the complete trash bags who are only around because of luck. Personally, I like Nagi and Bachiro, but when looking at all the characters, there's always going to be one that you can at least relate to and immerse yourself in. And because you relate to them, you also feel the hype and defeat that comes with each play in the story, which in turn makes the story more enjoyable. Not to mention, I kind of like how the author made Isagi this super chill and nice dude off the field, but once he's on the field, you better not piss him off. Like, if you don't pass him the ball or you end up failing to make a play, he's just going to insult you so bad that you end up finding the dad who left you just so you can go cry to him. Okay, so you have a good story, a good power system, and good characters. But what about the artwork? Well, you are in luck because the manga artwork is probably the best part about Blue Lock. The amount of praise that I've heard from Blue Lock's manga is insane. If I had a penny for every time I heard or saw someone on social media compliment Blue Lock's manga, I'd have enough money to fund the Blue Lock project myself. But seriously, look at these panels and tell me that they don't deserve the hype. And personally to me, what makes the manga even better is the fan coloring. Like seriously, compare these two panels and seriously tell me how Blue Lock's fan coloring doesn't make this panel all the more impactful. And I know what some people are going to say, oh well the fan effort and involvement isn't a justifiable reason as to why this series is better. Except it is. Listen, I can enjoy almost any form of manga, but if the story's the exact same and I can pick one that has normal black and white, or one that looks like it was colored and sent from heaven, why wouldn't I want to read the one with the more impactful paneling? But ignoring the fan coloring, the anatomy and the effects for each character is beautiful. Considering this is a sports manga, showing good anatomy is probably one of the most important parts for the series. You're going to want the character's proportions to be realistic to the sport they're participating in, as well as accurate to the standard human body. And Blue Lock does this very well. And I also love the effects for each character being so unique, with each character giving their own style to their skill set. Baro's Black Lightning and Lightning Aura, Nagi's Grim Reaper Aura, Reo's Paper Light Copy, Itoshi Sai's Binary, each of them is so unique that it gives more depth into the character's individuality. And that's what's so cool as they are so vastly different but they're all chasing the same title of best striker in the world. So now we've already established that the manga is straight peak, but what if you don't want to read the manga and would rather watch the anime version? Well this is where many people differ in opinion in terms of the series. While I personally enjoyed the anime, there are a lot of people who complained about it and didn't like it at all. But again, it's true, in terms of quality, the manga is way better, but you can't really blame the animators for it. Adapting a manga panel and turning it into a sequence is incredibly difficult, and truthfully the anime just doesn't have the same amount of impact or oomph that the manga does. Take Loki's Godspeed Rush. The anime adapted it pretty well, especially with the sound effects of his acceleration. However, because they're animating a sequence, they have to take this single panel, which gets days of work spent on in terms of detailing, when the animators have to create a moving sequence out of it. Another complaint I hear a lot about is with Isagi's green aura and the CGI. First off, for those who were complaining about Isagi's aura being green, his character color is literally green. It was confirmed by the creator that it's green. Don't believe me? Just look at the manga covers. They correspond to their aura color and Isagi's is green. The reason his aura started out as blue and is now green is because everyone's ego is originally blue colored and as they awaken it changes color. We see this when Bachelor awakened, his aura color changed from blue to yellow. And just like Isagi's, it matches the color on the manga covers. So just stop complaining about the green aura, they'll probably make him go back to blue when he unlocks the metavision, so just chill the fuck out. Second off, the CGI may not be the best, but why are you overreacting? The CGI is literally only used for a few seconds at most, and yet everyone decides to start nitpicking about it. As someone who animates themselves, using CGI is incredibly necessary sometimes as it can save time while animating. You do realize that soccer has 11 players on either team on the field at once. You're legitimately expecting them to animate each player using frame by frame animation on screen rather than just a simple CGI model. And they only use CGI for scenes that aren't really the focal center point. Your focus isn't supposed to be on the characters, but rather the ball. And just look at this sequence. The sequence with Tokimitsu and Rin isn't CGI because they're the center focus. Everyone who's complaining about the CGI has no idea how difficult animating is and how long it takes. If you think the animation in CGI looks bad, Animate it yourself, then come talk to us. Ignoring the animation aspect of the adaptation, my favorite aspect of the series is the voice acting and the music. Starting with the voice acting, I don't care what anyone else says, both the English and Japanese dub are spectacular. Every character's voice just works so well with the character that they're portraying. In sub, my favorites are Bachelor, Rin, and Baro. 
but one of the best parts of the voice acting is actually in English. When I read Blue Lock and heard it was going to be announced for an anime adaptation, I was a little bit worried for how they were going to do Bachelor's voice. Because I was a little bit scared they weren't going to find a good fit for the character in either languages, but holy crap did they deliver. My two favorite dub voices are Bachelor and Tokimitsu, and the voice actors for both do so well at portraying their characters as they have very unique personalities that need very unique voices. But the best performance has got to be in episode 22 of the English dub with Isagi's back heel shot and Bachelor's awakening. Isagi's little got him was so nice. The sub's equivalent of his Teko? seemed a little bit out of place, but honestly the dub made it sound way better. Like it seemed like he was more invested in his successful fake out. But the one scene from that episode that I want to look at the most is Bachelor's Awakening, as it's probably one of the best scenes in the entire series. The OST, the scoring, the animation, the voice acting, the flashbacks, everything ties together so beautifully. I would love to show the entire song for this sequence, but it would get taken down for copyright. So I'm going to just leave a link to the OSD in the description because I highly recommend you go listen to it. But the anime 100% did the sequence better than the manga did. Not only the OST, but the second opening, Judgment, is probably one of my favorite openings of all time. The design, the music, the artwork, everything comes together so well. I just wanted to mention the opening because the openings are important too. So yeah, that was my explanation as to why I think Blue Lock is the best sports anime manga. So do I recommend that you watch or read Blue Lock? Yes, a hundred percent yes. In my opinion, Blue Lock is one of the best sports anime manga of all time, and if this video didn't change your opinion on Blue Lock, then that's totally fine. But anyways, thank you guys for watching, and like and subscribe for more content like this.